Can we hear me? With no rampant echoes or crazy stuff. Remember, I'm on a five second delay on my side. All right, we got the yep from Bud from Raptor PA. So here we go. Let's do this the right way. Welcome to Scott's Odyssey. Was that good? Did I pull that off? At the time that I actually said that, the stream was at 10 seconds on the countdown, just so that you're aware. That's how far behind I am. All right. So the purpose of this particular video is there have been some background changes taking place. Nothing major to the main channel. The main channel gets to stay the main channel, which is really, really good. Um, but there have been changes. I've created several other channels. And I wanted to let you guys all know what's been going on with Scott's Odyssey since, uh, well, since it started. Um, so... Now's the time for you guys to decide. Do you want to hear about the channels so I can get feedback from what you want to see in the other channels that I've created? Or do you want to hear about the medical situation and the reason why I switched over from going out on the sites all the time? Um, and then uh, why my personality seems like it keeps flip-flopping back and forth? Let me know in the comments, which should be over here. I think they're over. I can't see where my fingers point on my screen, my monitor screen. <laughs> Hi, Addy. I'll get all the highs in too. Hi, Raptor PA. Hi, Roger. Hi. How do I say that? Honderta? Hondru. Hond RTA. Honda RTA. Uh, again, hi, Addy. Hey, Josh. Hi, Brian. Who did I miss? Lisa and the whole fam. <laughs> it's okay. The channel's just started. Um, one of them's live. Um, the other two are, they're in a pseudo limbo as I figure out the format and what I'm going to talk about first. Honder A. Honder A. No, not Honder B. Because you're number one. While I'm waiting for you guys to tell me which thing you want to hear about first, uh, I want to thank the Burke family for uh, dropping off some really nice books. Uh, haven't had a chance to go through all of them yet, but I will definitely be digging in uh, some of these guys. They're pretty nice. All right, again, so the options are health or the secret channels that aren't secret. All right. Roger said it first. He jumped right off there. All right. So this is going to be essentially a repeat of what the guys out on Patreon have seen in an email with some changes. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing well. So as many of you already are aware, I've been struggling with some health issues and working through them as quickly as possible. So there's, there's that beginning. Um, so my heart, uh, you guys, most of you know about my, my heart situation where I died on the side of the mountain. It's stable. It's working. Everything's fine. 
medical's good with it, and it's an absolute win out of all the possibilities. Diabetes, it's still there. And I was on the pro or in the process of actually getting a, a pump to make it even better. And I, I'm really bad at managing how much insulin I'm injecting and things like that. Um, and right when I was getting prepared to do it, the companies that create the devices, they developed a new adhesive uh, to save everybody from latex adhesives. And in the process, let me tell you, my skin said, yeah, no, uh, you could, uh, Raptor PA could actually even tell you, like when I showed him a week after I had taken the adhesive bandage off, my skin turns in the, it, when I wear it, I take it off. It itches. I get uh, some, let's not get demonetized, uh, some weepage uh, of red colors and brown colors. Um, sometimes they're different, sometimes not. But uh, it, it turns into like lizard scales and itches horribly. So we're going to have to figure out what to do with that. Uh, the knee and the shoulder. Uh, the freezing of my shoulder and the freezing of the knee are definitively uh, diabetes related. It's called frozen joint syndrome. Um, one of the things that I learned about the frozen joint syndrome is that they don't tell you about. It could go away, but it'll definitely come back. And it's really neat because almost the entire winter, my shoulder, I gained mobility back. My knee, I gained mobility back. It was exciting. I was like, woohoo, I'm going to get past this. As the weather has been warming back up, I'm losing the mobility again in my shoulder, which is interesting. And my knee is starting to give me little twitches. So yeah, I'm getting older. I, I, I turned 50 and I've got some pre-existing things and things there. Okay. Breathing. Uh, a lot of you may have seen, if you were looking at the secondary channel, the liminal space channel, that I was sucking on one of these babies. This is albuterol. This is an emergency inhaler. Um, but what I have discovered and what I'm actually going to be getting tested for in more depth rather soon is I have most likely um, a deeper form of COPD. Uh, it's not based on the cigarette. It could be based on the cigarette smoking that I was doing, but I was told that I didn't smoke well enough for it to occur that way. So it could be a bounce from the COVID situation. If you guys remember, I did a video on um, the pulpit rocks in Pennsylvania, and I couldn't breathe going up the hill. But the week before that, I didn't do a video. I was sick the week before that with something that stopped me from being able to breathe. And the doctors passed it off as, oh, it's just some kind of flu, but it's not showing up on the flu test. That was about two or three months before COVID became the big thing. And I should have said some other word because saying that word, just turn this video that when you go to replay it, there's going to be these big banners from YouTube. Oh, COVID. Anyway, some of you saw me sucking on this one. But before I suck on this emergency inhaler, every day I'm sucking on this one. And this one has like this lock at the top and then it has this lock in the face and it has all these warning things on there. And this is called a cortical steroid. And this just allows me to breathe throughout the course of the day in a non-active manner. Uh, again, I won't know for a couple of a couple more weeks until I go and get formally tested on a breathing machine to see where I'm at. So if my voice sounds like I have a cold, as Brian Walter had pointed out in the comments. It, it's not a cold. The cortical steroid, I try not to take it a day or two before I actually do a recording because it really makes me hoarse. Um, and my voice gets all squeaky like this. And well, being that that's the last money maker I got, um, <laughs> I get a little bit annoyed. Uh, so that's the physical stuff, you know, just getting older. Now here's the big thing. And this is I'm coming out and why it's not what you think. Uh, the pink light in the background on the Scott's Odyssey uh, subscribe button there. Um, I'm sad to say that's not the kind of coming out I'm doing. No, I'm not sad to say. Actually, I'm happily married. I'm happily married. She's right. I'm very happily married to this woman. <laughs> and I have nothing against anybody of any other kind of uh, the two genders that are out there. Um, I have no problem which way they swing. That's their life. Uh, 
I have no fear of them. I have friends that swing all different kinds of ways. I don't. Um, it's not my deal. Not my problem. It's their life. As long as they're not pushing in on my life, I'm cool with it. Go do what you want to do, you know? Um, once you cross that line, that's a whole different story. And that's where bad things happen. But we're not going to talk about that. The reason why that's pink is I had it turned on and we had uh, a thunderstorm roll through and we got a brownout and I think it burned out the control module on it. So now when I plug it in, I, I can't make it brighter. I can't make it dimmer. Let me see. Can you see it? Can't make it brighter. Can't make it dimmer. When I plug it in, it flashes white and then goes to pink. So I haven't pulled it apart yet. I think if I pull it apart, what I'll see is that something burned off on the control module or it's inside the chip that actually got broken. Anyway, what I'm coming out about. Um, I, I want to let you know, I, I'm kind of embarrassed about this because I hate watching YouTubers that are like, oh, I'm so depressed. Um, but that, that's, that's a real thing. But mine's not based on YouTubing. Mine's based on the fact that I'm 51 years old. And it wasn't until three months ago, four months ago, uh, that um, I was trying to get out of the depression thing a little bit and, and find out where my motivation was going because it, it was getting bad. Uh, so I went and I talked to a shrinky dink. Um, and when I say shrinky dink, I do mean a medical professional uh, who has a medical degree, uh, as opposed to if I say witch doctor, I mean a therapist. Uh, so I went to a shrinky dink and he looked at me get to those in a moment. Um, I'll get to the comments on my screen in a moment. He looked at me. We talked. Uh, we talked for about 20 minutes and he did a lot of uh-huh, uh-huh, a lot of writing things down. Had me take a series of tests, which took about two hours. I took all these tests and he discounted like all the tests and he goes, okay, you're suffering from depression. You're suffering from ADHD and you're autistic. That's right. I'm autistic. Apparently. So uh, do with that what you will. I mean, we all knew I was weird. We all knew I was quirky, eccentric. We all knew I did all different types of voices and uh, accents. And we all know that I have a super duper skill for seeing patterns. So what does this mean? Well, there's a couple of different ways. Here comes another word where it's going to do a, a forced YouTube pop-up because somebody's going to get offended. It means from the eyes of the atypical world, my brain suffers a retardation where there is a lack of communication between the back of the brain and the front of the brain, where I run into situations where my brain works anywhere from four to six times faster than the average human's brain, the neurotypical brain. But I run into a disconnect with what are referred to as executive functions. Executive, executive functions are the things, let's say, take a shower. For neurotypical people, you take a shower because you need to take a shower. For me, I go, I need to take a shower. So a process begins where I have to go through all the different things step by step, walking up the stairs, going into my bedroom, collecting my clothing, getting all my things ready, what order to take my clothing off in, what parts of my body do I need to wash. This is all before I even turn on the shower. It turns into this big process, which leads to what's referred to as executive failure. And during this failure, I could reach a point where as I'm going through the process and before I've begun the process, I go, I'm not taking a shower. It's too much work. Uh, it doesn't mean I walk around stinking or with body wounds or anything like that. I'm actually very hygienic, uh, especially if you've seen the crap that I've gone through. Um, oh, my wife put up into the chat Asperger syndrome. Yes, technically it's it's a form of Asperger syndrome. It's high functioning autism. Um, the reason why I didn't say that is because Asperger, Hans Asperger, was a screaming one of those guys and you're not supposed to say that or make reference to that although the guy discovered something that was fascinating if you're familiar with Hans Asperger and history 
he discovered this particular syndrome and knew that there were dysfunctional people that needed to be taken care of, uh, people with autism that are not uh, verbal, ones that have emotional incapacities that make them violent or have violent tendencies. But he also noticed that there were a whole bunch of them that were no good for war, no good for putting things together, but they were the smartest people that were ever met. And he immediately grabbed them, trained them, indoctrinated them, and gave them, made them high-ranking officials in the Third Reich, which is just absolutely spectacular from a history standpoint, but not from a, what their main goal was. Um, so, yes, uh, yes, Honda, uh, Elon Musk, he, he has it as well. And I honestly believe I manage it a little bit better than he does from the social interaction point. Um, I learned how to speak to people. Um, oh, there you go. So I've had it for a long time, 51 years, my whole life. Didn't find out about it until just a couple of months ago. So I'm going through a process right now that's called unmasking. <laughs> and I keep taking my masks off to find out who I am because I learned how to survive. I'm Generation X. We're the feral kids. There was no one there to tell me what to do or how to do it. And it's not my parents' fault. This is a genetic thing. This is actually handed down. So uh, one of my two parents, whom are still alive, has this little tick. And I haven't figured out which one it is yet. We're leaning toward my father. <laughs> He's watching this. And I'll be like, ha ha, dad, you got the tism. Um, but at the same time, we, we don't know which one it is. Uh, so I'm going to have to look at other people um, in the family. Uh, where was I going with that? Okay, so it's not their fault. Uh, yes, Elon has it. Uh, he has a, a mega issue with speaking to people and processing the questions that they ask him. Um, the best way to scientifically describe the situation, and this is really cool, I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs except for nicotine from cigarettes and caffeine from soda or coffee. I never really had an interest, but if I fantasized about it, uh, and I've even talked to my wife, I was like, you know, I always wanted to try LSD or DMT just from a scientific aspect and because of the things my brain thinks about. And I'm actually glad I never did because apparently when you have autism, 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 autism. Boom, boom. There's a rap song in there. When you have autism, you're already tripping. If I were to urinate into a cup and have it tested, it would show positive for the same thing that you get from LSD or psilocybin, so from mushrooms. So I'm already tripping. So if I actually did LSD, what they've been learning scientifically is I'd be more normal because it would balance me out. It's mind boggling to find it out. So get all your jokes out. Ha ha, I'm smarter than you. Ha ha, I don't know how to pull up my own pants. So do whatever jokes you want. Uh, it's going to be an experience to see where I actually go with it. I didn't know that other people couldn't see the colors that I see. They can't hear the things that I hear. Um, I haven't gotten to the point yet to find out which part on that spectrum I actually am. Uh, what I do know is everybody who's a shrinky dink and everybody who is a witch doctor that I've talked to, they're all like, you're weird, but you're okay. And it turns out that, oh, that was the ultimate point of it. I've been masking for so long that, which means I've been using my neurodivergent brain as if I'm a neurotypical person. I've believed that I've been a uh, I'm kind of envious of neurotypical people. Uh, fewer struggles emotionally and logically uh, in a society that is mostly neurotypical. And what happens is I burned out. And I burned out big time. I was top of my game. Airspace engineer. Woohoo! Super smart, right? No, no surprise there. Uh, IT god if you will. I mean, I have a little infinity symbol over my head because I'm a wizard when it comes to information technology. Again, no surprise knowing that I'm autistic. Um, but I was top of my game, head of my class, best at every job I ever worked at, especially with hyper-focus capabilities. Um, 
but I played the game for so long wearing the mask that I was just like everyone else that what I did not know because I did not know about the diagnosis is ta-da, I burned out on life, not on the work, on life, on everyday things, eating food, uh, forgetting to hydrate, having to go to the bathroom so bad that you forget that you have to go to the bathroom until it's borderline too late. Uh, it, it's actually fascinating now that I'm learning all the intricacies of it when I go, hey, I do that. Hey, I do that. Then I go and I crawl into a little corner, real dark in my room. And I, I rock back and forth with, uh, as my daughter calls them, you know, my T-Rex hands. And, and I rock and I'm like, man, if I didn't have that problem, man, my life would have been so different. Man, what do I do with it now? So that's what I'm working through. Um, so that that comes along with all the physical health issues that I have. And all the physical health issues, except for the diabetes, go hand in hand with the mental disability. Uh, cool things, I wake up in the morning and, and when I look at my wife, I go, do I have them, do I have them? And what I'm talking about is my eyeballs, my pupils are larger than other people's pu pupils, uh, which is really cool because with all the girls, they were always like, wow, you've got beautiful eyes. Well, who knew? Big pupils, autism. Um, <laughs> I don't walk around with my hands like this. My daughter does on occasion. I do sleep like that though. You do. You sleep uh, like that. I, <laughs> I, I get all, and I have to have like 60 blankets on me because I like it real heavy. Uh, I like things covering my arms. So I will be talking about this stuff more because it's, it's actually really neat. I'm still a normal person, just like you guys. We can have conversations. Uh, I do bad humor. You, you can ask for after PA. I'm a lot of fun. And I also have really weird insights on everything. Um, but at the same time, I can understand everything that you guys are saying. What I miss out on is when you want me to read between the lines, if it's not a uh, common adage or something like that, if you're, if you're like, if you're like, oh, she looked at you and licked her top lip wink, wink, I'd be like, <laughs> her lips were dry. Yeah, that's all the further I'm going to get with that. I, I won't understand anything else. Uh, as I'm learning, uh, my wife's always said that I'm very flirtatious, you know, that I'm very flirtatious with people. Right? And I, I'm really not. If I like you, I will tell you I like you. And you'll be like, uh, okay, that's weird. And that's my way of telling you that I actually like you because I don't, I don't know how to flirt. I don't even know what that really is or when they're flirting with me and people think I'm flirting back. It's like, <laughs> there's no flirting going on here. It's just, I'm just being a person and we're having a talky talk conversation. Wow. That was a throwback. How many people here are old enough to know the talky talk song? Anyway, that's South Pacific Broadway. All right. So there's the medical, there's the layout. That's the dealio. Um, as we're also discovering, because I am a neurodivergent, my daughter, the former indentured servant daughter, is also neurodivergent, and that's where all her snarkiness comes from. I trained her biologically, genetically, and in real life. Fortunately, she's going to have a head up because we know this now. She knows what to look out for and all the stories I've told her and how to manage and how to play the game that I was telling her when she was in school now have a very different meaning, um, but she'll be able to mitigate masking and maybe she won't mask her whole life and then burn out from society and she could just be herself and let people know that being weird is okay. You might not like us at first. Give us a chance. We're not bad people. I often wonder if the way I present my videos on YouTube is one of the things that stagnate growth because people go, you said this and this is what you mean. And I go, no, I said this and that's what I mean. And I wonder if people are reading between the lines and the things that I say in my videos where there ain't nothing between the lines. I tell you point blank. I tell you straight up. I don't understand the concept of uh, I know why people lie, but lying is so much effort. I, I, I speak truth and I speak fact because 
I can't keep track of lies. If I do a lie, first off, you're probably going to catch me. Second off, I'll probably forget. Um, so comedically speaking, the way the ADHD and the autism work together, uh, I'm actually going to steal this from a comic that, <laughs> that we've been watching um, on Instagram. Uh, he's got stems. My stems are, my stems are things like these. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, I got them. And these are expensive ones. Each one weighs like almost a quarter of a pound. Uh, I play with toys like this. Uh, I do magic tricks. I do a lot of magic tricks. I will roll coins in my hand. I will roll uh, fingers in my hand. I will play piano um, because I can, I can hear music and then go over to a piano and play it, um, <laughs> which I'll do a whole video on the cool things about autism and the sucky things about autism because I feel a need to do that because it'll make me feel better about who I am and what I am and maybe help me accept it a little bit more. But anyway, um, so <laughs> going into that, oh, I lost my track. Ah, ADHD and autism, how they work together. Okay, so ADHD is an irregular mannerism of thinking. It's not really attention deficit. It's you're thinking of so many things that you can't keep track of all of them. I already keep track of 14 to 20 things in my head where the normal mind can only do six or seven before things get forgotten. As a matter of fact, one of the other talents that I have is I can take those 13, 14 things, drop them into a singular box, hold onto that box, start a new box with another 13 things and have access to up to 13 boxes. Each one I can pull out in an instant and give you a complete list of what was in there. And I can do that repeatedly for 13 concepts in a single box, up to 13 boxes. And I can take those 13 boxes and do another set of 13 subset boxes. Um, so that's the ADHD part. Autism is what keeps track of all of that. ADHD wants to forget it. So the best way to think of it is autism is a Lamborghini. ADHD is a Volkswagen bug. The Volkswagen bug has the Lamborghini engine in it. The Volkswagen bug has no hubcaps, no airbag, no seatbelt, and no brakes. And so while the one is flying at 100 miles an hour on a highway, I'm going with no safety measures whatsoever. But boy, am I going, and I can't stop going. My brain just goes and goes and goes super duper fast. Um, I am in a position where I'm supposed to try out some drugs. I hate that uh, people want to do medication because it is not a disability. It just stops me from acting neurotypically. So from my perspective, I think it's more of a societal issue where we are learning how to work with neurotypicals, but neurotypicals know nothing about us and automatically are afraid of us, don't like us, um, feel off about us. And that's just, that's okay. That's natural. That's very, very, very natural. All animals uh, in the animal kingdom do that kind of a thing. Uh, even we do that kind of thing where I can walk into a room and within a matter of moments tell you who's a good person, who's a bad person, who's got alter things going on, who has subliminal things going on. Who, had, who doesn't want to be there, which they're the people that I'm most attracted to, the wallflowers, the quiet people, the weirdos, um, because I don't know if it's an instant connection or the overwhelming concept of justice that autistics have uh, about morals, which we'll get into that stuff in another video. Okay, that's the medical. Let me do a catch up real quick here on what people were saying on the right hand side. Thank you all for participating and chatting. And thanks for letting me get that off my chest. I feel, I don't know what I feel because that's a new thing for me. Um, <laughs> and I didn't mean anything by the two gender comment other than biomedical. I can't see beyond the biomedical. New Coke is back. I like that. Here's my Coke. Uh, I drank uh, excessive amounts of Coke Zero. And I never could figure out why. And now I know 
because the carbonation, I can't drink regular soda, it's got sugar in it, I'm type one diabetic. Uh, the carbonation, it's all about the carbonation. It tickles my tongue <laughs> and it, it technically becomes a mental stim for me to feel okay when around other people or when certain thought processes happen. Uh, girl gamer, age doesn't matter. Uh, as an autistic, I do believe I am two thirds the age that I actually am. Um, that's why I do stupid things in videos. I shouldn't be 51 years old with a slight weight gain climbing up the side of a telescope, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, yeah, the depression thing is kind of, it's, it's annoying. I'm just, I'm just clawing my way out of it. Uh, because, because I am 51, that means, uh, there's like no medical coverage out there. Nobody gives a crap. So you, they don't give a rat's ass as people would say. Uh, yes, I am odd Roger. We know that. <laughs> and I'm not going to stop being odd. If I stop being odd or childlike, then you know that there's something very serious going on in my life. Let's see. Oh, eccentric, Elon. <laughs> yeah, Himmler was actually uh, talking World War II. Himmler was, his mind was freaking beautiful. He, I, I, If we take out the whole kill the Jews part, and the Third Reich part, those guys thought of stuff that was just mind-bogglingly incredible. They were so advanced in their thinking and their science. All right, let's see. Extremely pattern-oriented, ha-ha. <laughs> uh, dyslexia, that's an automatic flag. Uh, dyslexia is a top surface, just like ADHD, with autism on the bottom. Go check into it, get yourself diagnosed, get the paperwork. Uh, because there's ways to teach you how to cope with it beyond what you've already taught yourself. And thank you for the huggles. Uh, so a lot of people right now, it's kind of popular on like Instagram and TikTok where people are like, oh, I got autism. Oh, I got this. If you're not diagnosed formally, don't go around saying that you have it. Um, it's not a boon. Okay. It comes with, it comes at a price. <laughs> it comes at a big price. Uh, thank you, Raptor, for uh, commenting about the not seeing anything between the lines. Yeah, I don't put anything in between the lines. I wanted to. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more shortly here. Uh, I wanted to talk more between the lines, uh, and I was going to go full-blown conspiracy. It wasn't going to be anything about history, uh, but there's a downward spiral comes that comes with that. And like I said, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Thank you, Lisa, for not misunderstanding me and, uh, with my points of view. Um, I'm not a hater. Well, that's not true. I am a hater. There's a, <laughs> there's this thing about being a hater that I actually exude. And it is when people wrong other people in an unjustified manner, I hate on them. I turn into like a gallant soldier to save the other person. But even more than that, there is a thing called ignorance and another thing called stupidity. The difference between the two is ignorance means they don't know. When you do know, and the logic is presented, and the backing to that logic is presented, and the history behind it is presented, and you still choose the wrong thing, which it infuriates me, that's called stupidity. And I'm very bigoted against stupidity. <laughs> I just, I cannot tolerate it. Uh, like when we send a spaceship up, I'd love to be on the side of the flat earthers, but give me a break, guys. Give me a break. We have science, satellites, photos. It was discovered by people in the 1300s 
just based on shadows on the face of the planet. Just back off the flat earth. Just don't go there. Talk about all the things that surround it, but don't, don't do the flat earth with me. I'll get angry. <laughs> all right, let me go down. Age, yes, age happens. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Oh, why are you bored and, bored and lonely? There's a whole world out there to go see, if you can. I don't hate Philly. I do hate Philly. I don't hate Philly. That's that's my home. That's where I come from. Uh, you can take me out anywhere, but uh, as my wife, my, my wife loves that I'm from Philly because if I slip, if I go ahead and I slip into my Philly accent and I start talking like a Philadelphian, and saying things like, one of my favorite parts of drinking the soda is because of the ice in it, which is made of the best water in town. She gets all, like, giggly about it. Um, <laughs> if we go out together, or we can go and order a pie. We'll eat a pie. You can get yourself a cheesesteak. Make sure it's wet. I don't care if you do whiz or not, but just make sure it's wet. Um, let's see. You're right. <laughs> yes. Yes, Lisa. Water. I like my water. I don't go across the street. I go across the street. Um, we could do it all day long. Let me tell you, we can hop on that John because John's in the dictionary now. We could talk about John and all day long. <laughs> and believe it or not, even when I slip back into the accent, it's not as... Um, as Philly as it used to be. My younger brother makes fun of me for that. Uh, what's what, It's not water ice, Roger. It's water ice. Okay? Water ice. Please. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I see that come up right away. <laughs> Next, they're going to try and tell me how you eat a Philadelphia pretzel. It, it'll drive me nuts. Uh, one of the other things about autism, this is pretty interesting. Uh, I didn't know about this one. Uh, whenever I used to travel around, I used to go to places like uh, Boston, New York. Um, apparently, people who are autistic will pick up the accent and start using it back with the people that they're around in order to merge with the neurotypical person and not create any conflict, which is hilarious because when I came back from Boston, I was telling my wife about the stories, how I had parked my car out front of an expired Meta. And when the guy was telling me that I was parking my car in front of the expired Meta, I hadn't go get it into the garage. I told him, I don't know what a Meta is. And he kept saying, oh, it's an expired Meta. And I was like, what, what's this guy saying to me? Turns out he was saying I was parked in front of an expired meter. And <laughs> from that point forward, I was able to do the Boston accent just magically, specifically the Southie. And that's the way I, if, if you're out in Wilkesbury, we can sit down and we can shoot a root and we could talk, you know, for two, three, 20 minutes, whatever you want. And everywhere I went, I was able to pick up their adages, their language, their motion, and their accents. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's fun. <laughs> if nothing else, it adds to voice acting when I tell the stories. Um, so there's that. Uh, nice, nice Honda. Let's see. What else do I have? Uh, yep. In the message that I'm looking at the, uh, behind the camera at, at the message that I had sent out to everybody who's on, on Patreon. This is not a plea for anything. I realize my brain does not let me suffer the same as an holistic person. An holistic person is a neurotypical person in the general public. There's nothing wrong with being neurotypical. Nothing wrong with being the holistic person. Um, it's not a disability. The ADHD and depression are, but I'm working through those right now. Uh, the autism is not a disability. Um, I like to refer to it as neurospicy. Uh, <laughs> I just do things differently, and I'm not a hater. Although I think the wife, the wife might argue, <laughs> there's times where um, I'll be there with the uh, former indentured uh, servant daughter and they do this and they do that. And she'll be like, yeah, and they do this and they do that. And 
I do think it sometimes makes an atmosphere where it seems like um, we're claiming we're better somehow than the other person. But again, it comes with prizes. Um, like she's got a lot of gut issues. I have a lot of gut issues. Oh, wow. Um, welcome to the party, Seanigan yeah, Skywalker. Seanigan Skywalker is my eldest biological son. So feel free to make fun of him. You think, uh, you think former indentured servant daughter is a trip. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he's an interesting little fellow. He is indeed. How's the weather down in Florida, Sean? <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's get on to away from the medical. And now we're going to switch over to the channels. All right. So I am working at getting myself back out into the field. Still need to work on the breathing issue. Uh, when we did the BMO, the Black Machanan Observatory, it was a straight ride, flat surfaces, didn't have to walk very far. Uh, and as you saw before I started the walk, I hit the emergency inhaler. And after, after I climbed up the side of the actual telescope, came back down, Went to speak to Bud, uh, Raptor PA. And when I went to speak to him, I was losing my breath. Every time I inhaled, my lungs were filling, but I wasn't getting any oxygen. And I felt a little gray behind my eyes and went, okay, hold on a moment. And did the emergency inhaler, inhaler and was able to continue responding to him appropriately. So I need to get to the bottom of that and find out what can we do? Because the last thing I want to do is walk around with an air tank. Don't want my lungs replaced if I don't have to have them replaced. I hear it's a pretty sucky procedure. I want to stay away from this stuff. Not because it doesn't work, but because I lose my voice. It's, I think it shrinks my vocal cords. Um, but I have to put my health before I have the channel. But I like my voice. And we're not like gonna we're not gonna get you into that spiral. Uh, <laughs> so with the channel. The second channel that has gone active, I, I if, if any of you are on Facebook or on Patreon, you'll be aware that I put out a poll for what kind of channels would you like to see Scott's Odyssey do aside from Scott's Odyssey. Doesn't mean that Scott's Odyssey is going away. That's my baby. Um, I was top of my game, working in corporate America, looked really good. Uh, and when burnout hit, I dropped everything just like that, grew my hair long, became a bum, and started a YouTube channel. So this is my life now, because that's the choice that I made, because it removed all of the things that created the burnout. Uh, so I will not let go of Scott's Odyssey. That This channel, that, this channel is going to stay. Um, but what I was thinking was, there's a lot of other things that I can do, which technically I can do everything. I can do everything you can do, brother. Yes. Yeah. Honestly. And so, uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, what we're going to, no, we're not going to talk about Pats or Genos. You guys need to stop talking about Pats or Genos. Go to a freaking Roach Coach. Go to Jimmy's. Go to a Frankie's. Go to a Frankie's or a Jimmy's if you need to go into a restaurant. Get it from a Roach Coach. Do not go to Pats or Genos. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, if I had a quad tunnel hell, I'd be riding it. I'd be doing it, but I don't. Actually, one of the things I want to work toward is getting an e-bike. Um, not because it's popular and everybody else is doing it, uh, because I was thinking I can really leverage that successfully to aid me in getting to certain locations. Um, let's see. Make sure you keep brand name with inhalers. Okay, thank you for that piece of information. Uh, mine's probably crappy because I'm. Uh, no, it's not. This is this is big brain. This is this is not an advertisement, but mine's single brain. That's brand name. Same with the uh, the Hedison, as I call it, the medication that's supposed to be helping my head. Thank you very much. Can't spell my own name. Uh, I appreciate it. Let me here. Look, hearts. Ta-da! Nope, that was 100%. Hearts. There you go. Thank you for that. Okay. 
back to the channels. So the one channel that went, I, I had asked people, what kind of channels would you like me to see, see me doing? Would you like to see me doing Odyssey Reacts? <laughs> that was a funny video up there. Did you guys see? No, wrong way. Sorry. That was a funny video up there. <laughs> you see, oh, look at that idiot. You want to see that kind of stuff? Um, but we'll get deeper into that. Another one was, or would you like to see conspiracies? I should have put an audio file into Streamlabs OBS, uh, not an advertisement, uh, where I could have just hit X files. Doodly doodly. Um, a tism. Just, uh, yeah, that's a tism. That's called that's that that tism. I have really bad. That's called echolalia. Um, if if we're, if we're out together and you're like with me or something like that, and you like do something like pop ba da ba da ba, here's a story, and then you stop within five minutes, I'll be singing or whistling the whole entire song because I can't get it out of my head. For the and, next twelve hours. <laughs> And it will be on repeat, nonstop, until I listen to it or play it on a piano. And that's how I get it out of my head. Um, so anyway, I said, or so Odyssey Reacts, or a conspiracy channel. Woo! Um, and then I had I had some other ones on there. Um, what were some of the other ones? Uh, Odyssey Overreacts, where I just go absolute verbally ape, ape shit and beat all the viewer or all the negative comment people over the head, neck, chest, and face with words. Um, some people really get into that. Like, hey, um, because words are a powerful, powerful weapon. Um, you can always beat someone with your intelligence and your patience verbally and with logic and facts, no matter how many bad things that they actually say. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. So going through, the poll came up where uh, right off the bat, hands down, Odyssey Reacts videos was number one. Odyssey Conspiracy was number two. Now, the third thing that I did create was a B channel. Um, there's a lot of times I get questions in the comments about, well, how do you actually do this? What's your equipment? Um, what's it like when you go out with other people? Different, different aspects of that, which is... Really neat. I think it's one of the reasons why Raptor PA hangs out with me because there's he likes my videos. He's also a YouTuber. Um, but the stuff we do behind the scenes is totally unscripted. There's absolutely no filter whatsoever. So the things that come out of the mouths, at least mine, <laughs> not necessarily buds, but at least my mouth are so off the wall crazy, vile, dark. There, there's just no filters because I'm not a hater. So I'll just say whatever's on my mind. It's just totally unfiltered, uh, completely. Uh, so there, <laughs> there's that. That particular channel is up. It's live right now. I will put the link down below. It's called Odyssey Liminal Space. You go to the last video, you can find the link and click up on it. Actually, if you go to the main channel and you scroll down to featured channels, that means channels that I feature. Uh, Odyssey Liminal Space is there right now. It's got a similar symbol to Scott's Odyssey. Um, you'll also see Lag Creations out there. Uh, or no, Just Left. Just, just Left. Mm -hmm. Lag Creations is the name in the chat. Um, but Just Left, uh, she makes cake pops. Um, so... Odyssey liminal space is out there. Now, I'm going to warn you, don't jump out there right now and go, okay? If you are offended by things, and you don't like hearing things just shot out there, or you're not in a place in your life where you can handle differing opinions, don't bother going out there. Just stay here and enjoy the stuff that I put up here. Um... I don't, I'm not looking to offend anyone, but people get offended over the craziest, what I consider crazy. Um, and I am crazy. I got papers now. Um, <laughs> it's official. It's official. I am crazy. Um, and, and I'm not looking to hurt anybody. I don't have time for that in my life. I, I honestly don't have the emotional empathy or capacity to care about that. Uh, I probably would have made a really good doctor because I, I, 
except for I would have had a total lack of bedside manner. I'd have come in and been like, yeah, well, tough luck. You lost your leg, but I, I, I saved the rest of your leg. So good luck with that and take these pills. Here you go. Um, people, I, I guess that's like, uh, was that Marvel character in that movie? Uh, Dr. Strange. Absolutely no bedside manner, but still the best neuroscientist there was, right? Um, so, yeah, I probably would have done well with that. Anyway, I don't have the emotional capacity. I try. It doesn't mean I don't have feelings. and It doesn't mean I don't feel things toward other people. It's just when it goes from here to get it to you, probably not going to happen. That's why when you watch uh, uh, Ranger Phillips at the end of the video, oh, man, I was dying. I, it started off really nice and clean, and I was like, here's my script. And this is how the fellows died. And here's the history to it. And then I did more research and I read my script again and I adjusted my script and I went three or four or five iterations. Then I was at a point where every time I was reading my own script, I'm like, the, the bastards. Yeah, couldn't yeah. <laughs> I couldn't even read it to my wife as a, as a pre-trial before I went down the site, <laughs> making jokes the whole time. She's like, oh, cry on the camera. And I'm like, look, stop, I need to get through this. <laughs> And it only took like four or five takes and a couple of pauses, but I finally got through it. I didn't say cry. I said just describe the whole She says you guys like the whole emotional thing. And I'm like, what? Yeah, who? You like the authentic. Who does the emotional? Okay. Authentic. Do you need to talk to Aaron and have her tell you that this is my show? Oh, no. I'm always Man. in the background. I digress. <laughs> so, <laughs> she is always in the background. Except for when I go out to film. Then she's always in the foreground. I got to tell her, get away from that. I'm trying to do a shot here. Can you move? That's anyway. Um, so, Odyssey Liminal Space will be all the B cuts, things I cut to the floor. If I just feel like rambling on about something that doesn't deal with history or an interesting site, that's what that kind of site is. Don't go out there if you're easily offended because I say things off the cuff and totally unfiltered. It's the real me, not Scott's Odyssey. Although it is also Scott's Odyssey because that is also me. You'll also find out that when this hat is on, I'm Scott's Odyssey. When I take this hat off, autism says that I'm Scott, not the Odyssey. So it's weird stuff like that. Now, pretty soon I'll be bringing out the Odyssey Reacts channel. What I need from you guys is to know what you want to see in the reaction video. Do you want me to react to videos where, again, I go, ha, ha, that guy's a goofball, um, where I come down on people for the way they present history, where I punch up on people and bring them to light, saying the way this person presented is really good. Would you like to see interviews with people in a pod podcast format where I go, here's a person who's creating history right now. Uh, here's a person who's actually making this kind of a difference. Here's a fan of the channel and what they would like to see. Um, would you like to see me reacting to news? Would you, which is really important because I'll bring some interesting things and perspectives on what I see when watching news versus what you see when you watch the news. React to people's comments on videos. React to weird ideas and concepts that people put out there into the public, like Flat Earth. Um, or just react to sheer stupidity of other people. Uh, let me know what you guys would actually like to see. Uh, you can leave it in the chat here. You can leave it down in the comment sections. You can send me an email. Just give me a heads up of what you would actually like me to do reactions to. I have my own ideas, but ultimately it comes down on what ideas you guys would like to see. I'd like to do reaction videos. I watch a couple of people that do reaction videos and I go, this is kind of fun. This is a community building concept. Um, okay. That brings us to the third channel or the fourth channel. One, two, three. The fourth channel that will be created. And the fourth channel is not called Odyssey Anything. It is called The Dark Side of ROM. Uh, being a computer nerd, uh, if you're familiar with ROM, ROM means read-only memory. It's the permanent condition of a computer. It's programmed and cannot be altered. Once it's been created, it cannot be altered. And we as humans all have a read-only memory, uh, just like a computer. But within that read-only memory, there are dark thought pro 
processes that took place. Um, what's that phrase that's used? Intrusive thoughts. As an autistic person, when I have an intrusive thought, unlike a analytic person, a neurotypical person, when you have an, uh, have an intrusive thought, you eliminate it, you pray to God to help you eliminate it, you push it down, it disappears. When I have it, I speak it out loud. So if you're ever walking down the street and you see a kid misbehaving and you have a intrusive thought, like, man, you should boot that kid across the street. I openly say, man, you should boot that kid across the street. Doesn't mean I'm <laughs> looking to bring harm to a child or anything by that means. It's just, it's an open thought process and I am unfiltered. So we all have it on both sides of the spectrum and non-spectrum, but nobody talks about it. It's a conspiracy-based channel because conspiracies are those dark thoughts. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that actually create self-fulfilling prophecies or who explore those dark thoughts and bring them to reality. Uh, one of the things I get to say now that I'm paper is I'm one, one bad lab experiment away from being an arch villain in a, in a novel series or to the world. But there's a lot of villains out there. There's a lot of arch villains who are hiding information. Um, to give you an idea, this is going to be ridiculously lengthy. So if you, <laughs> if you want, you could say yes or pick one or two or three out. Um, probably going to talk about most of them, but here we go. So within the conspiracy channel, dark side of Ron, we could talk about news. We could talk about trending things and the conspiracies behind them and what's being written between the lines. We could talk about ideas on policies like the cashless society or this turnover to self-checkout. And if you really understand what I'm talking about, then you understand how dark the concept of self-checkout or cashless society really are. Um, I do want to steer away from politics unless it's conspiratorial in nature. And that does include conspiracies that become fact and truth, as they often do when people like me talk about conspiracies. Uh, I've been working with conspiracies since Y2K. That's when I got hardcore about them. Um, I'm cautious about this because sometimes it can become all-consuming when you wear the tinfoil hat. Uh, what was that movie with Mel Gibson in it? Right? 12 Monkeys. No, not 12 Monkeys. Uh, the one with Mel Gibson when he had to catch her in the ride belt. Anyone want to drop that in the comments for me? But it can be very, very, very. What? I, I just caught this on the side. No, I did not take her to Santucci's. You know, I lived four blocks away from Santucci's Pizza in Juniata. Um, Santucci's, that was the best. She has no idea what square pizza is. Most people don't know what that is. Anyway, sorry, back to this. Okay. Other things like uh, sending a message in a bottle. Like, this is happening right now, if you didn't know this. NASA is sending a message in a bottle to Europa which is one of the moons of Jupiter. And the message is an invitation to talk to the potential aliens that they believe might be there. This is an actual mission that NASA is doing right now. What, what's going on? Why isn't this in news, media, or anywhere else? You can go look it up yourself, but we can talk about that because I'm all about the aliens, trust me. Uh, items in history like Tataria? Or did anyone ever stop and think about why are cats the only animal that has slitted eyeballs with the exception of reptiles, which specifically is alligators and snakes? And why do cats hiss when big cats that have round eyes don't hiss? And snakes and cats both eat mice. Did you ever wonder why? How about end of the world predictions? Like that's a big thing right now. Uh, end of the world predictions that were put out by Barack Obama 
which seemed to actually be happening exactly as he put it out in that movie right now. What was that movie called? It wasn't the Keep Looking Up or Don't Look Up. It was uh, one where oil tankers were crashing into shores and, and whatnot. Um, <laughs> <it's okay. laughs> yeah, be good in the comments, lag. Um, how about the weirdness of O blood and how we can save dogs with our human blood and dogs can save us by sharing their blood to us. And maybe that's why it was so important throughout all of history that dogs are man's best friend, but that's a whole other thing. And who made it that way? Because O became A, then A became B, then B became AB. And then the positive and negatives came into place and who created that? Those are not natural genetic alterations. They don't exist in other animals, just us. And we only recently learned how to genetically modify things. How about hybrid cryptid animals that are being dropped into our national forests right now, maybe? Or how Canada is airdropping wild wolves into U.S. national forests? Do you hear about that one? Or the BS of climate change and how it's laid out in a book regarding the first global revolution and how to get people to conform to a new world order, a globalist plan that was written back in 1991 in order to unite the world or agenda 21, or we could go really deep on agenda 2030. How about sounds in the sky? The trumpets, have you ever seen them videos where they talk about the sky trumpets that it sounds that are actually the digging and creation of underground cities to protect somebody from something, but nobody talks about that. <laughs> Let me throw some more out there. How about people who are mostly autistic and have interference syndrome and the ability to direct or to directly and uncontrollably interact with electronic and electrical devices remotely, like walking underneath the street lamp and the lamp turns off or uh, when they touch computers, and my wife and I joke about this, and all the problems on the computer just go away, which was a big part of my life, about 10% of it when I did all that stuff. Uh, and how when they're really emotionally bereft, if they're around their computers, their computers will crash. I could give you proof and point on that one as well. Now, the difference with this type of channel though, is it won't be based 100% in fact and truth because most of this stuff is circumstantial information. And that, that's what will separate it completely from Scott's Odyssey. All right, how about uh, the radium secrets of the four corner states and Native Americans and why the United States people took it away from the Native Americans and then we had the radium girls. And it wasn't just going on watches. Radium was in lipstick, tinctures, makeup, lipsticks, makeup, uh, clothing items, and what it actually did to people, aside from killing them. Uh, how about the upcoming Pittsburgh purge and their total lack of police in the evening? See, there's there, there's so many other things we could talk about. Uh, let's see, what do I have here? Opinions of people who do things for the wrong reasons, like hiking to a destination as opposed to hiking for the journey. Why is the sun being blocked out? What about the weird biblical questions that I had since going through Catholic school that nobody could answer? Like, if God said no gods before me in the Ten Commandments, doesn't that mean that there were indeed other gods? Or how they're going to sacrifice the red heifer really soon? And if you're not familiar with that concept, that one will... But we're going to be careful with the biblical stuff, because I'm not hating on anyone who has a strong religious belief. And I'm not looking to create arguments because that never goes well, especially when it's religion, trains, or politics. And that's why we avoid those things. No offense to my train fans out there. Um, uh, the PSYOP of the Mandela effect. Uh, the end of our proper dimension in 1988 with the collision and collapse into a different dimension. If you like that one, that's a, that's a fun one. Research into the lizard people. That's what they would say on the Wi files, the lizard people, or those who were here before us, or those who are here now that you don't even know about, or the ant people talked about with the Hopis, 
for the fourth turning of civilization, which we're now transitioning into. I'm telling you, I have so much that I am so well versed on. The wife gets to hear it all the time. And I don't know if she's a fan of it, but she lets me do what autistic people do, which is we do information dumps. I will dump so much information on you that it should give you a restless night of sleep um, in a good way where your brain is trying to look at the world a little differently. Like, I can't wait to start talking about Antarctica. Oh, my gosh. Or uh, America, named after Americana Vespucci. But it was called America by the Incans long before Vespucci came out, long before anyone found it. Uh, George Washington, I just used this one. Did you know that George Washington was bulletproof? Did you know that he was six foot two in a world where men were five foot four? Do you know that he had red hair? I mean, nobody talks about those types of things. It's really, really, really interesting. That's just some of the ideas. Uh, so let me know in comments, send me emails, let me know in the chats, just drop information on me for what you would like to hear and see in a conspiracy chat. I'm gonna do some catch up here on the live chat because it's just zipping by while lags like taking it over. Do you, do you want to be a moderator? Anyone doing anything bad? I see a handful stuff of can't spell my own name where it says message retracted. I don't know if you pulled it back or if the YouTube said, ah, you're cursing or ah, you're putting in URLs. It'll automatically pull them out. It's nothing personal. Uh, it's just a safety thing. I've had people jump on where they're like posting their channel or um, as Raptor PA could tell you, like on the Facebook side, it's hilarious how many, how many, I, I don't know, probably Nigerians, um, meaning people of Niger who are posting a picture of a porn star and they're like, hi, my name's Tandy. You didn't respond to my message, heart, heart, love, love. Please tell me how you're doing. And so it, it takes care of that for me. But no, she didn't go to Santucci's. Is that what we're doing? We're doing pizza? <laughs> Roger said. Roger, we can't afford pizza. Uh, <laughs> all right. Cats, predictive programming. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah. That's a fun one. Predictive programming. Oh, ho, ho. yeah. Oh, don't be, don't be afraid of the AI. The AI aren't going to be taken over for another decade. Uh, they're not there yet. That's just a, a news thing. They're getting smart and they're really annoying in a lot of ways, but they're not taking anything over. They're not, they're not there yet. They haven't started changing their own code yet. Ooh, tunnel hell. Like it. Those tall indigenous people. Mm-hmm. Harunushani. Try it with me. Harunushani. Iroquois is a French derogatory statement for them. They actually call themselves the Harunushani. I'm not really hating on you because you said Iroquois. <laughs> but every little bit of education helps. Hate on everyone's show. Uh, Shanak and Skywalker, I did put it out there for people to have the Odyssey Overreacts channel. Uh, they did not like that one. They didn't want to see me gaming either. You know, where I go and I smack all the noobs in the, in the lobby around and clap them real hard. They didn't like that. Lake Arthur, marching salute. Okay. Um, so, can't spell my own name, said, camp out on Lake Arthur, you'll hear soldiers marching. I will hold off on certain ghost paranormal in the conspiracy channel because that's another thing that me and raptor pa and some other people are kind of working in the background and we're not at a point of telling you what the name of that's all about but that's our a concept that we're going into will it be like most of them where we go ah look it's a dark room and i'm almost no i, I i'm not afraid of things which is another autistic problem. Um, I don't know if it's a problem or not, but 
I do things that are stupid that'll probably get me killed eventually if the medical doesn't. But I'm not afraid of that. And I actually am fascinated by that. Somebody would be like, oh, I heard voices and touch on the shoulder. And look, I've got scratches down my back. I'd be like, I'm going. Which way was it? How many feet back? I'm going. I'll, I'll run right in there. I just, I would love to study that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, Raptor P and I, Raptor PA and I, uh, along with a couple other people, we're trying to, we're working on that. We, we're we're going to go in that direction. And it might involve things that go bump in the night. Um, it might involve things that start with a para and then another word. It might even involve cryptids. Who knows? But we will see in time. I figured... I may as well just embrace this world that I've gotten into over here. Let's see. No, there are no coincidences. Uh, there is absolutely no coincidences. There's not even a such thing as chaos. Uh, when, when your brain starts running faster, you start noticing patterns. And it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful world. Everything in this universe, from beginning to end, is, it's already done. That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> uh, I did that. Okay. Jonathan Skywalker, you're going to send me some links to a cool sci-fi thing and a fantasy thing that I'll like a whole lot. Okay. This is probably the most interaction I've had with that particular son because we moved to Florida and you know, like he's down there every once in a while. I'll be like, hey, and then he'll be like, hey. And that's all the more autistic people need to communicate. Um, so, so this is something new for me. Uh, yeah, I, I see that Lisa doing ghost things. All right. That was all the news that I wanted to bring to y'all tonight. So yeah, you want me to do Philadelphia? I was doing y'all, which is a little bit Southwestern, right? Um, I could do for you Pitts, Pittsburghians. Pittsburghers. <laughs> what are people from Pittsburgh called? Okay, I'm going to call you a Pittsburgher because it sounds really funny to me. Uh, let me answer Tunnel Hell here. Hawden Shaw Me. Um, so for all you people out west, for all yens, there we go, for all yens out west, or is it? Yuns. You guys out west, yuns or yens? And then the yens would be here in the real central PA. Yinzers, thank you. Um, so yinzers out there for yins. And then here it would be yuns. And then if we go to Philadelphia, it's yous. So <laughs> was there anything, any questions people want to ask me? Any I'll throw it out there. What do, what do you want to chat about? Throw anything at me? I gave you my updates. I'm in a heavenly relief point right now, which is pretty cool. Thank you all for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go catatonic for the rest of the evening. This is like so much interaction with other people. I love people. I just can't be around them. I can handle you as one. I can handle you probably up to two or three but once we get to four or five or more, which I've had thousands of people stand before me when I was doing orations and stuff, I just, it kills me. It drains me when I have to go in the corner. I have to get all that energy back or I have to stim. And the number one way that I stim, you guys are going to think this is funny. I'm a 51 year old gamer and I will, let me see. Do I, where is my, anyway, I'm a 51 year old gamer and I will game for hours at a time um, when, when I get really, really drained from social interaction with large numbers of people. I will, what, four, six hours a shot every night for an entire week, which rolls into months. Um, right now, I'm my longest from gaming. I haven't done any serious gaming a month and a half, almost two months. But I have been gaming a lot with my daughter. We've been doing a lot of grounded. But I normally I'm I, 
matter of fact, one of the people that are in the chat who are watching this right now, um, they keep sending me, they're like, come on, we need you in hell divers. Come on, we need you in cod. Come on, we need you. Over. And I, and I'm like, no, I'm overwhelmed right now. And, and I can't do the gaming thing right now either, but I am an avid gamer, uh, board games, any kind of game, word games, trivia, <laughs> I will own and shoot first person shooters, adventure games. I love video gaming. Um, so that's, that's what I do over there. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's one of my autism things for, that's how I deal with things. That's how I, so when this is all said and done, yeah, the wife just made the comment that I'll probably fall asleep uh, and get underneath a heated blanket, and then put another blanket on top of that just to make it heavy, and then I'll probably pass out uh, as I regain energy. All right, what do we got? We got anything? Come on. We're good? Are we good, my people? All right. Well, then let me say this. As always, I love all of you. Thank you very much for coming out and watching. Thank you very much for your support. Let's do the algorithm stuff. Give it a like. Leave me comments. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little notification bell so that it'll feed it to your phone every time I type a letter and say like, boink, it'll go like, bing, Odyssey said something. Sean and Skywalker will make that private. <laughs> As always, I thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Love you, everybody.